What is going on, everybody, and welcome to another weekly update. What I like to do in these videos is provide you guys some upcoming events, some upcoming earnings to get you prepared for the week ahead. That sounds like something you are interested in. Consider subscribing as I do provide or will provide uh, some additional content here in the upcoming months. As of right now, we are doing weeklies as it is important just in general to have an established a good uh, consensus of what is currently going on in the market and where we could be potentially heading in the next two to three months. I don't like to go too far ahead. I think if you think too far ahead, uh, you could potentially get caught up in events that may not occur for months on end. So it's better to try to keep it in a two to three month window. I am very much more a swing trader uh, for the most part. I do just do some intraday trades, but ultimately I do more so of longer swing trades as those seem to be a lot more profitable uh, just depending on the current market sentiment and one thing i have noticed being in this market and understanding markets throughout the years is you have to be adaptable there are some markets where options play very well there are some options where they do not or some uh, cycles where they do not there are some cycles uh, that it's better to play equities it's some cycles better to play futures currently as of right now the option cycle is not what it was a couple years ago and so that's why i think it's destroying a lot of people because of the fact that a lot of these options price in some huge numbers so if you're not paying attention this is why i list the numbers on the options uh, towards the back half of the my document that i have which i'll go ahead and pull that up but i what I'm talking about ultimately is this down here, uh, this this price in, you have to be aware this is priced in given this uh, specific events. If it's related to any kind of economic event, you normally see that price in the SPX. If it's obviously individual stocks, you'll see that being priced in and that's normally more so based off of earning cycles. So you have to be very careful and understand that if these numbers here, you have to kind of, if you have to be watching the numbers and why I show them every week, because you have to uh, determine what exactly is going on with that particular stock or index. And then you need to know what the, essentially the average is or the baseline, because the baseline is where you can make money off of options. And if you know that there's a specific event that it's not being priced in that week, given off your, essentially what your average or your baseline is that you know that you can make money off of those options. If it's not aligning with that, you do not need to be trading it because it doesn't matter how big that move is. If it's priced into that option, you are going to make absolutely zero money. And this is why a lot of people have lost money on options this year. And that's why it's better to trade equities uh, this year in, in futures. And a lot of people have moved to futures because of that fact. Uh, but again, that's a very different game compared to a lot of other different things. So you have to know what the market sediment is and realize it does cycle. Option cycle will come back around and be strong again. As of right now, it is it is not. So it, it is to an extent. But again, you got to look for those momentum stocks. And this is why if you're trading options, it's better to go with momentum, but you don't want to, you still want to get liquidity. And so this is why uh, look, this is why I play a lot of the what are quote unquote beta stocks, because these are the, all the big, big ticket stocks, essentially that um, they have a lot of liquidity. So it's easier to catch moves on those particular stocks. But it's, it's again, event, very event driven. If you can catch it where the baseline is good and there's a good event that pops off during that week, that's when you can capitalize on some big percentage gains on options. And so again, it's something you have to learn. It takes a while to adjust and understand that. Uh, but again, something I wanted to bring up kind of into this one, because as of right now, uh, we are in a very dead uh, period as of right now. Yes, I didn't actually write this down here, but we did have the core inflation report over the past week. And this is something that I, I want to point out and something I talked about. We've talked about expectations before. They are purposely setting expectations so that we've beaten all these companies. 80% of the companies have beaten expectations. That never happens. That shouldn't happen. These expectations are, are being put there to pump the market up. And one thing we've noticed coming into that core last Thursday is that they raised it just ever so slightly. 
Now, given this, this, this is the way normally normal inflation works, right? You have seasonal inflation that's going to bump up inflation to some extent. And so that was what the, the win was for this week is that we had a 3.0 inflation uh, year over year. And that was over the last uh, CPI. And then this one was coming or expected to come in, I believe it was at 3.2. We came in at 3.1. So it did uptick a little bit. Now the question is, is on the next core, does it keep pushing up will be the concern. And so yes, they're starting to see, okay, well, we're getting closer to 2%. So it's okay. But again, looking over the report, you have to understand this. Yes, used cars have come down. Yes, other things have come down because people cannot afford these things. People are at this point being very selective in what they're buying, but they are still purchasing. So you have to be aware of that. Yes, your uh, expense in food is still very high and the expense in homes is still very high. Rental units is still very high compared to what it was. And so a lot of people are still draining, but they're trying, people are still trying to keep that same lifestyle. You have to understand during the pandemic, it changed a lot of people lifestyles. They went with free money. And so now they, you know, it's that 30 day habit. people spend, they want to keep spending and they don't know how to readjust and and essentially recalibrate themselves for that. And so doing that, now you've created this, this monster that wants to keep spending. And so we're seeing that. So after the core, we had that this week, uh, the market started being pulling back. The market started pulling back since the downgrade on credit. Uh, so you have to be mindful of that and understand what the last time this happened in 2011, when we got a downgrade in credit, it took a little while for the market to digest and then it just completely flopped. Now we're rolling into a lot of big series of events which around this time of year, this is why October becomes like that that dark, dark month uh, because of this fact. You have Jackson Hole, you got the G20 Summit, and then you got essentially um, the budget as well coming around the corner on top of everything. So with all that being said, these are some of the things I wanted to kind of recap and kind of highlight of what happened over the week as far as aside from the CPI, which I don't know why I didn't list that here, but uh, because this week there really isn't a lot going on uh, as we are preparing for Jackson Hole and the G20 Summit. So over this past week, hardship withdrawals over 401ks have increased 36% over the last year. The U.S. hit a record $1 trillion in credit card debt. And the scary part is there's $3.5 trillion untapped credit card uh, debt still out there that could be used. And so this is the concern. So not only are we seeing people pulling more so out of the 401ks and essentially uh, tapping into their credit cards, and not only that, but you're seeing more of an uptick in HELOCs as well. So people are taking money out of equity and essentially getting as well. The thing is, is the fact that the houses over the past couple of years, over this this last boom cycle. Uh, because supply is so low, so it's driven up the price, the equities of these homes. And so people are taking out HELOCs on these to try to cover the basis. You have to understand in the short term, that will still show a lot of growth. But you have to understand that people are running out of resources. When you start tapping into these things, that means normal savings are essentially all gone. And so what you're dealing with is you are dealing with uh, these a lot of you're accumulating a lot of debt and hoping that it, it turns around soon. But you have to understand the Fed knows exactly what's going on. They are trying to get it to this point to where you can no longer make those payments. And so you have to sell your home. This is what's occurring. This is why the Fed is playing this game. This is how you essentially normalize these prices is what exactly the Fed is doing. So they find the breaking points and then they pause for an extended period of time and essentially know that you are running essentially on a timer because you are digging into all these different lines of credit to try to stay afloat. They are very well aware of that. That's what this tool is used for. This is something we talked about when, when it started happening, that this is going to happen. Like, And yes, short term, it looks like everything is fine and dandy. Yes, short term, 
you know, employment numbers are up. These are temporary jobs in a bunch of gig work that people do not want to do because they just don't, it doesn't pay enough to car or even make that job worth anything. And we, we even want to start talking about the job market and stuff. And, uh, you know, they're now they're starting to enforce people to go into work. Uh, because of the fact that people are working multiple jobs, something I brought up briefly before is that people are working multiple remote jobs and then they're not even really, they just sign in and that's it. And so now you got essentially them monitoring how long you're actually on your laptop. Some are even going to uh, far extents to where they want you taking pictures of your laptop every 15 minutes uh, to make sure you're not out somewhere you're not supposed to be, right? They have a lot of different monitoring techniques. They can't, uh, legally like sit there and turn on the camera and watch you all day. But uh, ultimately understand that um, this is where we're at. This is a current circumstance. People are having to work multiple jobs. And so are, are, some people are willing to take that risk because of the fact that um, they have to try to stay afloat just because things are so expensive right now and so unaffordable and understand that now there's talking about potentially raising rates two more times first it was no we're good we don't have to raise rates and then two more times two more times two more times and then you had biden come out and say right after the inflation report that things are just strong and things are great and we are defeating inflation yes of course inflation is defeated if your if your rent is more than your whole check is worth and your food is more than your, but those two things uh, combined are more than your whole check is worth. So you have to start dipping in. So if you want to have any sort of entertainment that you have to start dipping into credit lines and that's what people are doing. And so in hopes that things get better before, you know, that big bill is due or, you know, they're just trying to make do and that's all they can do. And so you're just accum accumulating more and more and more again in the short term. That's great. But that this is, this is not a long-term fix. And you have to understand that you think it's going to correct itself in the next month or so. The Fed is thinking next year is when credit credit's going to start getting cut. And this is the problem is a lot of people are concerned. And, and so you're getting people that are selling homes as well. You have to understand that they are pushing HELOCs or they are pushing other forms of, of, of debt to try to get people to buy homes and, and do all these things. And you have to understand that that's, that's not where you want to be because when all these things start coming due, again, you got student loans right around the corner. Once they start tapping into these things, you're going to, you have to realize that when rates actually start decreasing, that's when the economy is going to be so bad people will not be able to afford a home and so they're trying to drive this fear in this this time frame that if you don't buy a home now it's going to be like 10 percent uh down the road it could be but you have to understand that by the time that happens and they start actually cutting rates down they might start cutting rates at a rapid pace back down uh at some point once all these increases start actually catching up that they might start decreasing them fast but you have to understand by that point when they start cutting them people are going to be out of money and so in debt that they can't afford to buy these things and so that's why you have to understand you can't be driven by this and you have to critically think about what is going on because that is not what is going on at all right people are in debt and the longer this will go on and it will go on for a while because the Fed is still seeing too much demand. People are still living this luxury lifestyle off of debt. And so until that stops, the Fed will not stop. And then they will continue to push it. We're slowly seeing the demand die down in some sectors slowly, uh, but ultimately understand that that is what's going on. And again, fear mongering that if you don't buy a home now, you're not going to be able to get one because yes, uh, rates may come down, but the demand's going to come in. The demand's not going to come in because everybody's going to be so broke, they can't even qualify for a home. And so people are going to start selling their homes. And then there's going to be a surplus and that's going to make the housing industry plummet. And so to think that this is not going to happen, they've told you this many times before, if the Fed, if it's the uh, administration, the media, that things are fine and dandy. They tell you the story all the time. There are plenty of examples that they say this stuff and then it happens, right? 
And then ultimately understand that back in 2008, they said all the same things. We're going to have a soft landing. You're just telling us we're going to have a mild recession. Now you're telling us it's going to be a soft landing again. How does that happen? Things are not getting better. People are in debt and their interest rates continue to go up. So you have to understand that is what's going on. And they're going to hold them an extended period of time uh, till that happens. And then the actual uh, market recession will correct at some point when we start cutting and again, you have to realize it's going to be really bad at that point. Like you're already going to be at the point to where you're selling your home before they start cutting. Or you have sold your home and you're living off of whatever you got for your home. But you have to understand that depending on how that plays out, there might be a huge flood of homes at the same time. And this is why you can't really determine the uh, the timing of this because you don't know. Everybody's essentially at, the, at, at different levels. Some people... You know, maybe have more uh, credit than some other people. Some people still may be living off of savings. Uh, the problem is, is it's starting to gouge more in. When you start getting it, start see, seeing these numbers get closer to the 50 percent uh, of the the po American population, then you realize at that point that is going to be really bad. You don't really want it close up to 50 percent because that's going to be an absolute wreck. And on top of all this stuff. Uh, we are continuing our debt since we had that debt ceiling deal is up to like 1.6 trillion now. So we're just continuously just spending, spending, spending. So even said there would be a freeze, that is a lie because they're they're spending more than they ever have. So there is no freeze. What are they actually freezing? So with all that being said, some big things uh, we need to watch. So these are things. In this, and in quiet times like this, you need to be watching for these kind of things. Now that we've gotten gotten through a lot of the big earnings, we need to be actually be watching and seeing what's going on and paying attention to the true story. And I'm not trying to hear the fear monger. What I'm trying to tell you is that there is a bigger move coming that's going to be very detrimental in this market. And even back in 2008 when it happened, you know they try they're trying to continue to feel and grow the market but it's not going to happen you can't fight it but they also the same token they can't just give up and let it just crash right because it could get way out of hand if you do that as well you have to provide hope or else it crashes and then you have absolutely no control over the chaos and so that is currently what's going on and what we're going through so so that's what we got for that uh, that was quite the rant uh, but nonetheless <laughs> um so this week, the only thing we really got is the FOMC meetings, and that was essentially the last, uh, what we had over the last monetary policy, which, again, we raised another 25. It would be interesting to see what uh, comes of that, how, how they're kind of feeling about that. So that, that may not be a huge mover. It might potentially give more reason to the downside. If they start talking about raising interest rates more, that could be a concern because if you start seeing inflation come back, the whole market's going to reset again, just like it did. And then the market's going to come down very quickly because your big tech will start selling off heavily because of it. So that's the last thing you want to see. But again, they've made them very generalized and very generic so that they're trying to soften the blow. They're trying to do the soft landing, but it's not going to happen. They're going to try to prevent it. This is why we're seeing a lot of staggering events or staggering news come out. Uh, because of that and you have to remember back in november of last year there was talks of how if the americans citizens knew what was going on with the banks they would absolutely lose it this was before svb and we've just had two more banks that have failed since then even though they said we are strong and resilient the next earning cycle if we don't see it coming into jackson hole jackson hole is going to i think uh shine some light on some more big issues but nonetheless we'll see from that point so again fomc minix the c we'll see what goes on there but again coming in upcoming events we are lining up for jackson hole and I th again i think that's going to set the stage on how we're going to uh monitor interest rates here from here going forward again the fed have been very good about this saying that they want to be adjustable depending on what's going on so they're not sticking to anything so you have to be uh, very careful that uh and, and what goes on there g20 summit again this these couple events lead into why october is so bad in that worst month of october because you always have jackson hole and the g20 summit which are like back to back uh that essentially um 
you know, reset everything. And then essentially then you get that uptick towards the back half of whenever all this, this Jackson Hole G20 summit are over and you get digestion of this. So again, yeah, what I'm looking for in Jackson Hole is what's going on with the banks, what's going on with interest rates there, and then to kind of see where we go from here. Do we get another uh, 25% increase on uh, essentially monetary policy coming into September? Again, very adjustable. I think that's going to really determine on headline news and what comes of these events. So at this point, that's all we are watching essentially to the next core, to the next um, CPI or not the core CPI, but the next monetary policy are these events. And we also, you have to remember too, there's also our earnings NVIDIA, which has been essentially the standalone company that has driven this whole AI and this the, the market to pump up over the way it has over the past couple of months. And so if I think, I believe they report next week. And so if they come out next week and it's really bad, that could be another uh, another reason to sell. So just be very mindful of that and how that could potentially play out. And so as of right now, monetary policy is until the 20th core inflation. The next one is until August 10th upcoming earnings this week. We got a good, there's a lot of good value. And again, you're trying to tap into the pulse of the economy. And these are ones that are going to move the market that much, but ultimately understand that this is telling you what's really going on. And so as of right now, um, I'm sure we'll see more losses and, and theft and stuff when it comes to uh, Target and Walmart this week. HD will give you more of an idea of growth and where uh, Home D HD is Home Depot. So it'll give you more of an idea of what's currently going on on that current sediment there. And then when you look at the watches and something, I talked about the options here. Again, everything is is very much non non-event this week. So just be mindful of that. So if something comes up, it's going to be a big event and could take the market by surprise if it does happen. We don't know. We don't know when news is, is going to drop. But again, we've had emergency bond buying. We've had, uh, again, credit downgrades. We also got a bunch of credit downgrades on banks as well. Uh, there was 10 banks that were downgraded as well this week. It's something you have to keep in mind and six more potential banks that were thought to be downgraded as well. So there, this, this whole banking crisis is not done. It's going to continue to happen with these banks. As long as interest rates are high and continue to push higher, you have to understand that puts a lot of banks in a lot of trouble the longer it stays that way. And so the, this is, these are things you have to be paying attention to, not what the administration telling you, not what the media is telling you, uh, because a lot of people could not explain it this way and, and what you should be actually watching, because again, they're trying to steer the masses to prevent panic. So with that being said, um, there's some things I want, I want to kind of look at here. So we're starting to get essentially the pullback coming off of the credit downgrade. And then ever since we've been getting some hotter reports on inflation uh, and everything else that is currently going on again, but we're strong, resilient. We'll see about that. Nonetheless, I still think we're going to at least pull down here to the 4,200 on a pullback. Will it be lower? Again, it's all about timing. You can't be too bearish. You can't too be bullish because you don't know what's going to happen at this point. I'm more bearish than bullish right now because of the fact that we are very overextended and uh, and for no particular reason as, as people are just feeding into this, that everything is fine and dandy and strong and resilient because they fed into that message and the market just ripped from that point. And AI, uh, that AI would solve all our problems and we wouldn't have to worry about it. That's not the case. And so being said, what we are looking at here is, um, Potentially 4,200, especially with Jackson Hole and everything. Is that going to happen this week? I don't know. Uh, if there's no big event this week, the market just may not may start selling off. We did break below here and retesting. So it'll depend on where we land uh, coming into this week. If we just start randomly selling off, selling into Jackson Hole, is it a possibility? I don't know. Um, or we could start potentially pushing up. But we are having a natural pullback and something I said, after you have all the big earnings, you got three to four weeks where the market just kind of it sells off. It pulls back from that essentially that pump beforehand and then it kind of just uh, starts to accumulate and then 
gets ready essentially for the next earnings cycle. But yeah, again, you have to understand you have a lot of big events coming up in the next couple of weeks uh, that are going to dictate just the sediment of the market. And so that's what you have to keep in mind. And if, again, there's any worries or concerns there, once we get through that, if the market hasn't corrected or recession type, we may not have the recession until next year. Uh, their recession. I believe we've been in a recession. Again, they're not going to tell you in recession until after we are starting to pull ourselves out of a recession. Like, oh yeah, by the way, we have been in a recession for, it's actually been a global depression. It hasn't been a recession. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. With the amount of money printed, it's it's make it uh, it's made it a global recession at something at a scale in which we have not seen. We are hitting historic levels on these on these debts and everything that we're doing. This is very historic. So you have to keep that in mind, um, especially the rates and, and again because of the money printing is and the massive amount of money printing that we've done. I've talked about this. You're going to get a lot bigger moves because of that. So with that being said, uh, we'll see what happens here. But I, I'm, I'm expecting us to hopefully pull back to at least 4,200. Maybe that won't happen until after the G20 summit. Uh, but I think at that point, that's when we're, we're really going to start getting some sort of a pullback here. Or we could start ripping back up and be testing 4,600. Uh, could be a strong possibility. You hit 4,600, kind of bounced off. We see if we can potentially get one more run. And then maybe that will be the drop in a Jackson hole. I don't know, uh, but we'll see what happens. Again, it's going to depend on how we open this week. There's nothing big this week, so our expectations shouldn't be super high this week. Again, it's kind of a dead month anyway in general. Uh, we're just setting up for these current events coming up because they will dictate what's going to happen over the next six months. So with that being said, let's dive into, I want to look at bonds. This is something that is I, I noticed the other day and something you really need to be paying attention to is that the bond we are in a debt-based system we are all contributors to this debt-based system uh, whether you want to be or not it's not really an option at this point but nonetheless look at the bond market and currently where it's at back since 2004 we're almost getting to low levels of 2004 on the bonds uh, so this is is something I think you need to be very mindful of. You do not want the bond market to uh, crash <laughs> because that could definitely hurt our system uh, in a in a very bad way. Um, I mean, there's no other simple way of putting it, right? You like you don't want chaos into us. Just a dollar going to zero. Imagine how much chaos that would cause. And so with that being said, uh, we are getting at some very, uh, in my opinion, dangerously low levels on bonds. And yes, Japan, yes, um, Europe or in China have hold, held a lot of our bonds. And, and China is trying to get offload some of that debt. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I think if you see the bond market touch here around that 87 I think this thing uh, could potentially explode out of here. And, and when it does, um, again, with bonds, it's hard to tell how the market's going to move off of bonds. No one can really explain how the, the market moves off of bonds. But one thing, it's normally inverse of where the bonds uh, typically work normally at, at some normal extent. But ultimately, it depends on the volatility of the bonds. If the bonds start getting really volatile, that's when you see the big moves in the market. And so uh, if this thing, typically when you start cutting, uh, this thing is that's when it causes this to kind of explode up. Uh, so that you can see why a lot of people are taking moves in bonds, because uh, if that does happen, that's a massive rip back up on bonds. And so this is something we need to be, again, paying attention to. And I think the more we float around this area, around the 92 uh, mark here, uh, I think you are about ready to see a huge, huge uh, upswing and something that Japan has talked about, right? That uh, they may start um, selling their bonds at a good rate. And if that happens, that could potentially um, cause a lot of heavy selling here and bring us to this dangerously low level. And so that's what the, was concerned there. Uh, but if we start cutting, um, 
again, just realize that that could explode. So you have to, this is like a, um, a seesaw. Like you have to be very, very careful. You can't have too much or too little as, as a very fine line that you have to mess with the bonds to be able to make this thing adjust correctly. It's a very fine tuning instrument. And so you could overdo it and you can um, underdo it as well. So again, something we really need to be paying attention to watching is, is what's going on in the bond market. So We'll see. We'll see what happens in the coming um, couple months. Again, they said they won't be cutting until late 2024. Uh, again, they just say that because they don't know at some point between now and late 2024, they have to kind of give a window of when it, that event could happen. When that event happens, you'll know because it'll be all over the news that something big enough is going to break uh, that they'll have to start cutting rates but we don't know when exactly that's going to be. Is that going to be around Jackson Hole? Are they going to announce something? Uh, is is the concern and things you need to be paying attention to? So, again, when that happens, when the rates start getting uh, cut, uh, this thing's going to start exploding back up. So, again, we haven't had a lot of huge rate increases like this since around that 81, 80, uh, 1980, 1979 time period for the rates. Uh, so this is why you've seen such a huge decline because we've gone essentially just up on the rates almost uh, since then because rates have essentially gone down to zero, right? That's when we hit peak up here. So um, it's completely resetting the bond market, uh, which could be a good a good thing, right? That's what we wanted uh, because we haven't really touched that. We've just been kind of exploding since. So uh, we'll see what happens here. And so that that again that threat on Japan increasing the rates to try to get it down to this level maybe something they're purposely trying to do but you definitely don't want uh, bonds to uh, to get absolutely obliterated either because that's going to completely uh, devastate our whole economic system. So let's take a look at what's going on with Tesla here. We're finally getting some pullback. It really needs to break this uh, two. 41 level is what I want it to do. Uh, at least pull back here to at least that 50. In my opinion, this would be a good, again, not financial advice, but this would be a good uh, window to start buying in roughly around this 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 210 to two, uh, 200 mark, I think could potentially be because we could pull back enough and then it might just hold here. I don't know if tech is going to, tech took a heavy hit last year. I don't know if they're going to pull back that far this year on a recession. Again, it depends on the timing and how things could play out. Um, but if it does start selling off, I mean, you really want to look at it. Um, it is a lower high, right? Like this thing hasn't created a new high on this side. So this thing could start selling off heavy here, much like it did here. We had a nice push up and then it just rolled over even more. And so that could be the concern here is you have a nice little push up. Did we roll over to new lows? Uh, it's hard to tell. Again, one of the best companies out there. So we definitely got to keep an eye on that. And be watching that moving forward. Uh, if we do hold, kind of looking for that uh, 270 mark uh, there. But again, I would really like it a little bit lower here. Um, it is kind of holding. There is kind of a zone here, uh, more so a zone here than uh, potentially right here. So you got two like back to back zones that are pretty tight right here. So if it does break down, you got another level that could touch it, hold it pretty well here. But if it does break the 200, uh, I think you've got a bigger drop, at least down to the 170. And then, uh, again, looking kind of like around that 100 mark there. So that's what I'm watching there. Uh, Pelantir, uh, looking to see if it'll break this uh, 14 mark. If you can break this, uh, your next big level, in my opinion, is probably down by 10. I really do like to start accumulating again by 10. Um, you have to see how this holds during the next two weeks. Uh, it is the first kind of cycle off of earnings. Uh, so we'll see if we can hold. If we can't hold, uh, kind of watching it down here around the 10. I really like to start accumulating around there. And then if it goes lower, just keep uh, DCAing if that is the case. Uh, snow is one I've been watching. It has been pulling back nicely. Uh, it does have a kind of a descending wedge. So normally descending wedge cup means it's going to pop back up at least 75% of that move. But we'll see. Uh, I really like I'm not really looking at it till it gets down here around the 129. Um, but I do like, I want to keep snow on the watch potentially for this week. A lot of these are still very over, overextended. Like meta is just way too overextended. Like this thing needs to pull back at least if I could get it around 200 or not lower, you have a bunch of gaps and something I've talked about, you need gap fills. Now, if it doesn't gap fill, that's going to be a problem. In my opinion, uh, you have another one here, but, um, 
we'll see what happens there. PayPal, again, this one is in a great spot to accumulate as long as you're aware that if the market pulls back, this thing could sell off even more. So I like this is one of the plays I do like normally if I'm watching any stock, any like well-known name stock that uh, someone off the street could tell you if it's accumulating like this, that means somebody is gathering a lot of shares around here. You have to still be aware and something I talked about that this thing could dip down even further um, to kind of get liquidity before it makes a rip up. So um, definitely one I want to keep on watch as well. So PayPal I'm watching. They do have there's a lot of. They're talking about crypto for it as well, or creating their own stable coin. It's not, I think it's more for onboarding. People that are in the crypto space uh, are well aware that that's not exactly um, decentralized. But nonetheless, with that being said, uh, they do have a patent on AI as well uh, that I don't think has really been disclosed just yet on what that is. But I think that uh, moving forward, it's already down like 80, 85% or something like that from the top. So I think it's a, a potentially good buy there. So I'm watching that as well. Uh, Amazon needs to pull back. Google needs to pull back. Like all these big seven, they need a pullback uh, period. So we have to watch that. BA, a massive rip, but it is hitting peaks. Looks like another um, bull flag here. It may push to try to top out of the 270 mark. Uh, we'll see if that's the case. Uh, again, if value can hold up, we got a lot of value plays this week. If value holds up once uh, this week is done, that might cause value to start pulling back a little bit. Uh, so trying to watching that there. It needs to hold essentially the 213 mark there. And then you got the banks uh, or the bank. Uh, you got JPM. Again, it's, it's consolidating for a little bit here, ripped up. Uh, we'll see. It could potentially push up to 168. Uh, ideally, you would want this thing to pull back to one the 140 and, and then potentially rip to, uh, to essentially indicate that it's it, it's a stronger move. Uh, but if it, if it doesn't pull back and just keeps ripping up, it's definitely not a good sign, even though it, it's holding a lot of the money in, in general. A lot of these other banks just are sloppy and junky. Uh, Golden Sachs, uh, Bank of America, again, not doing the hottest um, there, but... So that's pretty much it. I think I've, I've ranted quite a bit. There's a lot going on there. And like I said, the biggest things we're watching are events. We're just trying to keep an eye on what's going on with events. And then we'll take it from there. So that being said, if you made it this far, I do appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a like. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.